Okay, I'm going to show you how to complete the cheapest worn deck truss activity. Uh, begin with, this is the West Point Bridge Design software. So you need to get a PC, and then on the PC, locate the TechEd software folder. In there is West Point Bridge Designer. Go ahead and launch that. Um, when this launches, it may uh, prompt you with a tip. Feel free to navigate through. There are a lot of really good, useful tips in here. Uh, this software was put together at the U.S. Military Academy, West Point, um, by the Civil Engineering uh, Department there, and they do hold a uh, competition every year uh, for high school students. Um, we don't participate in it, uh, but it's an excellent simulation software uh, that they update every year uh, for the purpose of teaching civil engineering. So we're going to close that out, and we're going to uh, load a sample bridge design. Uh, load a sample bridge design, uh, say, um, actually go ahead and instead of loading a sample bridge design, we need to create a new bridge design. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the template that we're going to use is in the, the new bridge design. So go ahead and say OK there. And uh, this walks you through a series of steps in um, setting up a project. Notice that we've started out at, at zero because there's no uh, site prep involved. And the default span over this canyon here is 44 meters. Your bridge is going to be 24 meters above, um, above the water level um, here in this uh, situation. Just click Next. We're going to accept the defaults as we go through this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, West Point does have uh, some contests, and um, they give you a, a contest code uh, to work through. We just click Next, go through that. We're going to start with a default span of 24 meters. Um, that is the I'm sorry, the deck elevation over the water is 24 meters. That will give us a 44 meter span for our bridge. Um, we'll use the standard abutments that are built into the site. And notice now our site cost. Uh, just putting that that prep in there for those abutments is 62,700. We haven't even built a bridge yet. We have that in place. We're going to go with a no pier or one span and no cable anchorages. Um, click Next. Now, we'll accept the default of medium strength concrete, um, and we'll accept the default loading of a uh, two-lane highway with a uh, the load here, in this case, is um, the uh, trucks, a standard highway truck. Um, and we're going to click Next here, and this is where you need to choose the Warren Deck Trust template. Um, there are three types of trusses in, in bridge design, the how, the Pratt, and the Warren. The Warren uses equilateral triangles, and with large spans, those are bisected um, to, to form a right triangle. In this case, our load is going to be on top of the truss, and uh, we're going to see a distribution of, of tension and compression in a fairly equal manner uh, as we uh, design our bridge here. And uh, click Next here. Put your name in here um, as a designer, and uh, if you like, you can call this um, Warren Deck Trust as our assignment. Um, and then click Next, and uh, everything's summarized there, and we're going to go ahead and finish that. Now, it prompts you with a design template. Um, if I just accepted defaults and the position of uh, these points here. I'm going to um, use my uh, joint tool and uh, put the joints down. There are already joints by default in the roadbed, so you don't have to do anything there. Um, then I'm going to go to the member tool over here. And for right now, um, I'm going to use a default material of carbon steel as a solid bar. And this is a 140 by 140 um, square rod that that uh, I'm building with. And and when you do this, I would recommend you choose a kind of a standard pattern of making members. So uh, my members um, will start with my deck members as I work across the bridge, and you can see they're being added in over here on this chart. Okay, um, and then. I'm going to bring uh, the diagonal down now here just to shorten things. You can draw, click, and hold, um, go all the way across. That's a, uh, a left click and come up. And then I might put um, 
all my diagonals it's up to you whatever method you like to choose here um, the numbering in a way that you know where they are um, so all this is a default material just to show you the basic function of this software um, and show you how to interpret the information. Now I have a bridge that has been designed. Um, if I am um, ready here, I'm going to go ahead and test it. So I can go up under test or there's a little icon with a truck, run the load test annotation. Now the bridge needs to support its own load. And you see there that the bridge did not fail right in the middle. Um, that's a problem. Also, you see that the top members are experiencing a significant amount of compression and the bottom members are experiencing a significant amount of tension. You see that the diagonals are, are kind of an equal balance of, of red and blue, but those slanted inward are a little more under tension. Those slanted outward are a little more under compression. Um, these are some characteristics of the Warren deck truss that you can keep in mind in your design. Now, by accepting those defaults, my project design cost is 339,258.56. That includes the site prep um, setup for this. I want to be the cheapest Warren Deck Trust, which, yes, engineers typically are not designing to be the um, to be the cheapest around. They need to be economical. They need to be safe. Um, and we need to be ethical in our decisions. In this case, we're looking at um, a, a the lowest budget as possible and yet still build a safe bridge. Um, so what do you do from, from here? So you can pick up and look at an analysis of your bridge. Um, a couple different things you can look at. I clicked on this icon right here. You know, see the status, it says the, my, my bridge has failed. And this is showing me the forces on every member of my bridge. Now, earlier I said try to have a systematic approach in your numbering. So it gives you a general idea of where in the bridge um, you are uh, experiencing the, the different forces. And notice that my members slanting one way see no compression force and all tension. And my mem members slanting the other way uh, see all tension, I'm sorry, see all compression and no tension. Um, these are the uh, forces that were actually exerted on the member um, in the design process. Um, we see the absolute uh, strength of that particular member uh, as it's been put down in compression and in tension um, and then what it actually experienced. So using that data, you can um, go back through and downsize members or in if you need to upsize members um, and that's something you may want to copy out to the clipboard have on on hand um, now when i go back to the drawing board over here i also get that same information um, i might have to to drag it out uh, to look at the the um, the uh, whole board there um, it's showing me that these members, they're red, they all failed under compression. Um, if I want to see my member numbers, I can click on this little uh, pound uh, or hashtag, as you guys call it, uh, symbol there, and it shows all of the uh, member numbers. Um, and then I can highlight down here and look at the specific uh, members here and where they failed and the things that have um, colors on them, uh, I know that this member, member 17, that one right there, failed under tension. And I know that these members uh, up here failed under compression. And um, so I want to uh, change the characteristics of that members to, to see if I can uh, help with the performance. Now, if I select a uh, particular member like 17 here, um, I can get its design characteristics and, and where it is. So with 17 selected, I go to member details and here it says member 17. Um, and I have the, the stress characteristics here. It shows me this little triangle right here. Uh, it's a four meter uh, length member. 
and it shows me the tension strengths that that this uh, member experienced and it failed right there um, at I don't have the exact value here, but it, it appears to be uh, about 40, probably 4,700 um, kilonewtons of, uh, or um, what is that? I guess that, that would be, our, yeah, kilonewtons of force um, that was applied to that particular member. How can I change that with that member selected? If I uh, upsize that member and increase it, and I'm going to increase the strength characteristic that member has. So I'm going to just upsize that. You notice my blue line here. The triangle went away because that was a test data triangle. And when I upsize this, I am now above 5,000. So I knew that member had about 4,700 um, on it. And so if I upsize that, well, that's going to uh, change that characteristic. I do the same for each of these other members here. Um, now, once I've made one change, I lose my little triangle uh, to know where and how much. So you may want to look at this before you start making changes. Let's just upsize each of these guys. Um, we're going to double them both. I'm not changing material right now. I'm simply changing the size of the member. Um, now in doing so, you can see my project cost is going up significantly. So just by changing size, isn't necessarily uh, the best solution. You want to actually engineer this and use the data, figure out your best method. So now I'm going to go here and uh, we're going to test this again by clicking on the truck. Okay, a little better. It's supporting its own load. I can see it's really red there in the middle. Oh dear, it buckled because it was under too much compression. It's your task to figure out using the data how you can be successful in uh, the design here and so you want to look at the slenderness ratio that is the uh, size and length ratio you want to look at the uh, maximum forces in compression and tension that your member can can hold and you want to keep in mind the design of the truss whether uh, in this case we're using a warren truss but whether we use a, a pratt a how um, or a warren you want to uh, consider how those members uh, are handling the the different forces and uh, do your best to make first a functional bridge and then go back and make an economical bridge one that is a, um, low in cost so your first task is make it hold the load that it's supposed to hold and then after that go back through and change experiment with different materials there's three types of materials here you can use a solid bar and hollow tube both lend themselves well to the different forces and so you want to consider what's tension what's compression what works best um, in in those conditions good luck as you work to design your cheapest war and deck truss and when you think you have a solution that is good um, and i'll tell you if it is not under uh, two hundred thousand um, at least under two hundred fifty thousand uh, you need to keep reworking it do the best you can to try to get under 250,000 and then uh, the lower below that. Um, as low as uh, below 200,000, you can, I've seen uh, 170,000. If you really uh, spend some time on this, you can get a bridge um, that will work. What you will turn in in the end um, is a uh, screenshot of the printout of uh, the successful bridge um, and that will be submitted back to the assignment.